Thanks for tuning in to Lotus Yoga Online. This video is all about handstands, um, in particular, the puppy press. So I'm gonna show you a puppy press and a few different inversion options. And before we get into that, let's warm up our hips and target some of the muscles that are necessary for the puppy press. Start seated on your mat in a wide leg forward fold. If you have um, blocks at home or if you have something, something to mimic your blocks, make sure that you go ahead and get them and have them um, nearby on your mat because we will use those for some of our strength drills and um, you may want them as a little bit of a floor lift to help you get your hips higher over shoulders. So to start out, just give your legs a little bit of a shake. Don't worry about going to your, your max width. Just find um, your resistance spot, like that first resistance spot where you begin to feel just a small, subtle stretch on your inner thighs. Walk your hands out in front. On your inhale, lengthen in the spine. And with your exhale, pulse forwards just a few inches, not too far. Inhale back out, lengthen the spine. And exhale, pulse, maybe an inch or two deeper. Inhale, extend your arms, lift your chest. Exhale, folds deeper. We have three more pulses. Inhale, length. Exhale, pulse. Notice how I'm not rounding my spine and I'm not dropping my shoulders. I'm letting the movement start and be all in the pelvis, all in the hips. So for this type of press, it doesn't matter if you can hold a straight handstand or if you can kick up and like find your balance. This is all about setting up your center of gravity before you get your legs um, in the unknown, in that space way above your head where you can no longer see them. This is the style of press that really unlocked a handstand for me because it really, um, it really utilizes the rotation in your hips and the mobility that you may have in your hips. So if mobility is not one of your strengths, all of this prep work is gonna be super, super important for you to do um, on a really regular basis to unlock that hip rotation. Take about five more breaths in this beginning stretch. Engage through your quadriceps, flex your feet. So you're pulling your toes back towards your shins and then trying to lift your toes up towards the ceiling. Try to roll forwards on your pelvis so that you're lifting your tailbone and pulling it back behind you. Full inhale. Full exhale. Reach your heart forwards, draw your shoulder blades back. One more breath. Then rise all the way up. Grab one of your blocks or your mimic of a block. It could be like a stack of books, anything that you have. So for a puppy press, you want to focus on strengthening your hip flexor and using these small, teeny tiny little muscles in the hips in order to move your legs. So it's not all in the shoulders, it's not all in the chest, it's not all in the core, but it's the entire chain working together. So let's target those muscles deep within the pelvis, deep within the hips, by taking one block, place it in front of your foot. I wanna narrow my legs just a little bit. So if your legs are too wide, this will be nearly impossible. There's uh, a few settings of height. This will be the easiest setting on the lowest block, middle, or high. So pick which setting that you wanna use today and bind your arms at your low back. I'm gonna grab opposite elbows, lock your gaze at your toes, forward fold, reach with your heart, pull your navel in, take a long breath in. Long breath out, lock your core. Then inhale, lift. Up is one unit, so your leg comes with you as you lift, and then tap it on the other side of your block. Lift up, exhale, tap. Inhale up, exhale, tap. Inhale, exhale. Try not to knock your block over, so we're getting full clearance of your block or your prop by pulling your femur in towards the hip, 
and then matching your movement with your breath. Inhale up, exhale down. Five more. Flex your legs. Rely on your breath. Two more. Forward fold, reach out towards your foot this time. Inhale, lengthen. Then one more exhale, forward fold. Get really comfortable with that connection of drawing your thigh into your chest. So it's not always chest to thigh, but when we are up and lifting, we're pulling thigh to chest. That comes into play later on once we're upside down. Let's take our other leg, bring your block to the inside of your opposite ankle. Square your chest towards your leg, inhale. Then exhale, fold. Breathe in right here. Breathe out, lock your core. Inhale, lift up one unit. Exhale, tap down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, tap. Inhale. Exhale. So I try to go really slow, like a mindful pace, matching the breath. It's not about doing your reps and getting them all in, but it's really about feeling out the process, like noticing where you have tension today, where you have opening. And then if you start to feel a big Charlie horse in your quads, we're trying to create that sensation deep within the hip, deep within the core. Take three more, inhale up, exhale down. Inhale, exhale, last one, inhale, exhale, forward fold. Breathe in and lengthen. Breathe out and fold. Slowly rise all the way up. Windshield wiper your knees, just giving a little shake out for the hips. And then come into a Baddha Konasana with soles of the feet together, knees wide. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. Let your elbows press out on your knees. So we're not just pushing down with our thighs, but instead we're trying to draw a little more length wide so that your spine can lengthen forward. So that gets deeper into the rotation of the hips. Take three more breaths. Drop your chin to your chest. Slowly roll all the way up. And draw your knees together. Wrap your arms around your shins. Pull your forehead to your knee. Round through your back. Get a little stretch for the rhomboids. If you need to hook underneath your knees just to get a little more lean back, feel free to adjust. And then slowly unroll. Come into a downward facing dog. And this down dog, take a moment to pedal out your feet. If you haven't taken a yoga practice today and gotten into other postures, perhaps pause your video and Take a few sun salutations, just slowly warming up your body, bringing some weight onto your palms. We, we will spend a little bit of time on the elbows and on the palms as we set up our puppy pose with a few inversions. On your inhale, lift your right leg high. Open up your hip, bend at your knee. Draw your knee over to the right side. Flex your foot. So you want to create like a fire hydrant um, type sensation in the leg where we're not lifting and opening the hip to its fullest range, but instead letting your hip be parallel to the earth, straight out to the right side. Extend your foot, create an L shape in the legs. Take 10 small pulses with the right leg for 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Re square your hip. Inhale. Exhale, cheetah pose, knee to chest. 
step through to a low lunge. Lower down on the left knee. And then slowly rise up. Sweep your palms high. Then bind your hands at the low of your back. Reach your bind down your left thigh. Lift up with the chest and heart. One more breath. Then exhale, release your hands, frame your foot, extend your right leg for half splits. Keep your left shin down, walk your fingers back, windshield wiper your right leg. So a big part of pressing into a handstand, no matter if you come from wide legs, if you're coming from one leg like we will in our puppy press, you wanna have really open hamstrings. The more open you can work your hamstrings and your glutes, the deeper you'll be able to forward fold as we hug the chest down towards thigh. And then it's core strength to move the hips up in line with the shoulders. Take three more breaths. If you have the space available already, ground down through your palms, lift your right heel, and then slide your heel towards the front edge of the mat. You do not need a full split for this um, puppy press, but it is helpful if you start working towards that level of expansion. Ground down through your palms, step back to tabletop, hands and knees, cow pose, inhale. Cat pose, exhale. Puppy pose, walk your hands out towards the corners, then lower your chin and your chest, just five breaths. Round down through the palms, lift. Come back to your downward facing dog. Sweep your left leg high, inhale. Open up your hip, bend at your knee. Now trace your left knee over to the left side. So you'll feel the hip close a little bit more 90 degrees. Extend your left foot to the left side. Now small pulses, not your fullest range of motion, just tiny, quick movements to activate your outer glute for 10, nine, eight. Keep spreading out through the palms, push through the heel of your hands for three, two, and one. Re-square your hips, inhale. Exhale, cheetah. Step through, low lunge, drop your right knee. Inhale, lift the palms. Then exhale, bind your hands at the low back. Open up your chest, lift your gaze, three breaths. Keep your legs active, squeeze through your glutes. Draw your thighs towards the center line of the body, both of them hugging in. One more breath. Release your palms, half splits, Ardha Hanuman, straighten the left leg. Windshield wiper your left leg. So that creates a little internal and external rotation. And settle in for five full breaths. Remember you can scoot your heel forwards for a little extra expansion. Engage the left quadriceps. Pull back through the navel. And let your breath do the work. Your inhale lengthens and your exhale activates. One last breath in. Stay for the breath out. Tabletop, bring your left foot Back to meet the right. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cat. 
And set your hips all the way back to your heels. Interlace your fingers, take a figure eight for the palms. Just one last little bit of wrist relief before we ask the wrists to hold our body. So really important, anytime you're getting upside down, whether it's on your head and your elbows in a headstand, or if it's on um, your forearms in a forearm stand, or just your palms in a handstand, no matter what is touching the mat and touching the earth, that is your foundation. That is your rooting, like earth energy, and it always is gonna come back to foundation. The stronger your foundation, the stronger the pose will land. So if we're trying to create balance on a totally different center of gravity, like we're flipping it 180, we wanna create really, really strong roots, really strong base, so that the rest of the line can find um, its place. Think about a house. If you built a house in sand, you're probably not gonna get very far because the more and more weight that you stack on top, it's just gonna crumble and spill out. So the same is true as we start working upside down. You're not used to palms or elbows being the base. So spend a lot of time, a lot of postures, focusing on that foundation, focusing on pushing down in order to lift up. That starts in down dog, it starts in plank pose, stuff like that, that you wanna, you wanna put a lot of hours practice into those um, essential postures before you really ask your body to go, um, to go beyond. If you're ready, stick with me for this video and we'll get into it. We're gonna start with a forearm stand. Go ahead and grab a block if you have it. If not, you want it to be um, like about a novel, a novel height book. So not too much wider than the shoulder girdle. Squeeze the block in your palms. Try not to bend your fingers and wrap. Instead, spread out your fingers just like we, you would on the mat and then push with the heel of your hand. Bring your forearms and your block down towards the front of the mat and come into a forearm plank. Tuck your toes, extend out through the legs, and then squeeze your legs, squeeze your glutes, lift your navel up towards the spine. So instead of dipping down and feeling a little bend in the back, we wanna reverse and come high on the toes, pitch the shoulders forwards. Now notice how my fingers have not wrapped, I'm not knuckling down through the fingers, instead I'm spreading them out and letting the work be in the heel of the hand in the base of each finger. Walk your toes in as close as you can. Gaze down at the elbows and then roll up onto your toes. Hold here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, keep pushing through the elbows, get a lot of space in the neck for two, and one, slowly release. Come up onto your palms, cow pose, inhale. Cat pose, exhale. Step into a forward fold. Bring both of your blocks underneath your palms. We're gonna balance out our shoulder and chest drill with a little drill for the hips. So I like the middle setting on the block. Notice how my hands are right underneath the shoulders. They're not back by the feet. Shift all of your weight to the left foot. So you pick up your right heel about two inches and now slowly draw your right foot straight out to the right side as high as you can. Hold for five, four, three, two, one. Rotate your foot towards the back of the room. So you're in a warrior three. And now bend your knee, open up your right hip. So there's a little twist in the trunk. Keep pressing down through both palms. And now lift up onto your left toes. See how close you can tap your right knee towards your right shoulder. And then come right back where it started. Inhale. Exhale, knee towards shoulder. Inhale, exhale, knee towards shoulder. One more, inhale, 
Exhale, knee to shoulder. Drop your left heel. Straighten the right leg. Lower your foot to a hover. Inhale, lift it back up. Exhale to a hover. Inhale, lift. Exhale, hover. Like you're squeezing a spring between your thighs. Three more. Inhale, quick lift. Exhale, slow descent. Two more. Last one. Forward fold. Bend your right knee. Twist open to the left side. Full inhale. Full exhale. Come back to both palms. Soften your knees, hang heavy. Interlace your arms, grab opposite elbows. And take a gentle sway. Half lift, inhale. We'll do the same series on the left side. Ground down into the palms, try not to grip your fingers, spread them out and then transfer your weight to your right foot. Pick up the left hip, lift your left foot straight out to the left side, and hold. Five, four, three, two, keep the leg as straight as you can, rotate your foot towards the back of the mat, bend your knee so at first the hips are square, and now twist through the trunk, let your hip open so your knee lifts a little bit towards the ceiling. Take a long breath in, lift your right heel. Now see if you can tap left knee, left shoulder. Exhale, inhale, lift your knee high. Exhale, knee towards shoulder. Inhale, lift. Exhale, knee to shoulder. Inhale. Exhale, knee to shoulder. This time, drop your right heel, straighten the left leg. Lower your foot to a hover, squeeze through your inner thighs, then lift the left leg high. Exhale, hover. Inhale, lift. Exhale, hover. Three more, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, last one, big lift all the way up and then release all the way down. Bend your left knee, twist open through the right arm. Breathe. Release to your forward fold, interlace your arms, sway heavy for a moment. Some of these drills a little bit harder than the full posture because we want to we want to balance out like our effort and our ease even in the really challenging postures that take a long time to unlock in the practice halfway lift inhale ground your palms step back to your plank Lower down to the forearms. This time, spread out through your fingers. Keep the palms flat on the mat. Look between your elbows and then start to walk toes all the way up as close as you can. Inhale, lift the heels. Hold, five. Hollow out the low belly, four. Three. Two. One. Child's pose, come all the way down for a moment to reset. Deep breath in, full breath out. One more inhale, and slowly release. Roll all the way up. So let's put all of those movements together. 
in my body they feel really, really hard <laughs> when I do them as drills. But once we put it together all in the posture, like working up to the forearm stand or the handstand, you have like fully opened up that strength and that mobility in your hips over time, especially if you start incorporating these drills into your regular practice so that when you do lift both feet, there's no guesswork. Your core is strong, your hips know what to do, and it makes the posture just kind of lock into place um, a lot sooner than kicking or hopping. So, we're gonna try it first in the forearm stand. If forearm stand is not something your, um, your, your body is ready for, that's okay. You can do this in a traditional headstand with your fingers interlaced right at the back of the head. Just make sure you squeeze your elbows in so they're not any wider than your shoulders. Shoulder width, push down into the mat. I'm gonna do this in forearm stand so it's a similar setup. All right. Bring your blocks towards the back, just as wide as your mat. So you could have them like half on, half off. I like to go right along the edge, about halfway along the mat. Four arms to the very front, and then come into your dolphin pose. So when you're setting up your forearm, notice that your, your arms can kind of shift. Scoot them in a little bit narrower than your wrists, and then roll out. So you push down and then roll out, and they'll, they'll lock so they don't go wider than the shoulders. Tuck your toes, lift your hips, walk your feet in as close as you can, and then if you're going to use your blocks, that helps you get your hips a little bit higher than when your toes are down on the ground. So step one foot, I'm going to start with my left foot onto the left block, and then instead of stepping your right foot onto your block, hug your right knee to your chest, Send your right kneecap up to the ceiling, twist through the trunk so your hip opens. And now that same movement that we took in our drill, try to tap your right knee over to your right shoulder. Notice how you're lifting a little higher on the left toes, either hold or let the left foot float. If your left foot floated, straighten both legs and hold. Breathe. Five. Four. Three, two, to come out, draw knees to chest, and release to child's pose. Slowly roll up, head comes up last. Take a moment, let your, your blood balance back out. If you need to rest in child's pose with your head down, that's okay. And then just see how that went. Doesn't matter if your toes left your block or if they felt cemented down. They're gonna feel glued to earth for a really long time. Before you feel that lightness, it all comes back to the drills. How often are you incorporating them into your practice? And how much time are you spending um, focusing on that external rotation? And like true uh, hip mobility and hamstring length. Let's try it on the other side. Come back to the forearms. Forearms are like two equal signs. If you're taking it in the forearm stand, remember you can interlace and tuck your head down if you want to practice it in the headstand. Tuck your toes, lift your hips. Well, this time I'm going to step right toes over to the right block. Gaze down between the elbows and then lift your left knee into the chest. Draw your left knee straight up towards the ceiling. Little twist for the hips. And now slowly draw left knee towards your left armpit. That will get you lighter on the right tip toes. They may float. Hold five, four, three, two, knees to chest, child's pose, one. Hold your child's. If it feels okay, slowly roll up. Long inhale, let it go, exhale. Long inhale, let it go, exhale. One more breath, let it go. 
Notice how you feel right now. We're going to try one more time. If that feel, felt really comfortable and you were able to um, puppy press up to your forearm straddle, or maybe you even drew your legs together and brought your big toes to touch straight up overhead. Um, if that felt really good, really stable in your core, you can try it on your hands for your handstand. Um, I think handstand is slightly easier than forearm stand, but I didn't, I, I didn't learn them in that order. I, I set um, like a boundary for myself <laughs> a couple years ago, and I was like, you know what? If I can't find my balance, and if I don't have the opening in my chest and in my arm to hold a forearm stand where I have a bigger surface area, then perhaps I'm not ready for the handstand where it's a much smaller surface area. So you may set like parameters on your own practice like that. Um, it's not necessary, it was just something personal I chose to do. And I'm glad I did it because I got really, really stable when my head was like closer to the ground and it was a little more comfortable to fall in and out of for me before I moved on to the handstand. And then my handstand just locked into place pretty, pretty quickly once I truly was practicing it on a regular basis. So, see where you are. Decide if you wanna stick with a headstand puppy press perhaps move to a forearm puppy press, or you may be ready for your hands. Remember, we're not kicking up and we're not lifting our legs all the way up to the ceiling just yet. If you do wanna start practicing that, perhaps um, set your mat up near a wall. For right now, I'm gonna set up just like, just like this on my mat, come into downward facing dog. Take a deep inhale, big exhale. Lift up to your tiptoes, look to your thumbs, and then slowly walk your toes all the way up as close as you can. Keep the arms straight, your core lifting to the ceiling. Tap your right toes to your right wrist and hold for three, two, one. Tap your right toes down and then left toes, left wrist. Hold three, two, one, and release. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Standing splits. Lift your right leg up high. Bend your knee. Open up your hips. You'll feel a little twist in the trunk. Notice how my right arm straightens and my left elbow bends a little bit towards my shin. So that way I've got my max opening working in the left hamstrings and I'm able to move my right hip and that's gonna be the, the force to lift the left leg high. All right, straight in as much as you can through your right arm and your left arm. Lift your right knee as high as you can, and then lift your left heel off of the mat. Either hold here, or start to trace right knee over towards the right armpit. Push, push, push. If you feel light in the left toes, let them lift. If you get up, Straighten both legs and hold. Five, four, three, two, one. Both feet down. Rest in. Um, it's similar to a malasana, except your feet are together. Let your chest drape down through your thighs. Bring your arms wide and your hands just back behind the heels. Drop your chin to your chest. And slowly unroll. Come into your forward fold. We have one more side. Halfway lift, lengthen. Ground the palms down. Roll up to your tiptoes. This time tap left toes, left wrist. Hold three, two, one. Keep the arms straight. Right toes, right wrist. Three, two, one. Plant your right foot. Lift your left leg, standing splits. Now let your elbows bend. Open up your hip, bend at your knee. See how high you can lift left knee towards the ceiling and then push down through your palms, roll up on your right tip toes. Either hold this prep 
or see about tapping left knee towards your left armpit as close as you can. If that helps you lean forwards and you get light in your right toes, come into your straddle. Lean, lean, lean forwards, lift, lift, lift. Five breaths. Or the sensation of five. Eventually we'll meet in that malasana squat with the chest down through the thighs. Wrap your hands back by the heels. And eventually come down into Baddha Konasana. Feet together, knees wide. Inhale, roll the shoulders back. Exhale, gentle forward fold. Slowly roll all the way up. And come into an easy seat. These postures are not easy. And these transitions into these postures are certainly not easy. It does help if you have um, more mobility in your hips. If you do have um, a pretty decent like range of motion and um, like a pretty decent forward fold, this will happen quicker for you than if your hips are really tight. So we're gonna try it one more time. If you are a little bit tighter in your forward fold or in your hamstrings, you can add blocks underneath your feet in the handstand, just like we um, had our blocks for the forearm stand. So we'll do that for the last time. Remember, you can be doing this in headstand, forearm stand, handstand, wherever you are in your practice is exactly where you need to be today. And all of these transitions, they take repetition. They take time, they take drills, but slowly, slowly, over the course of a long time, you will open these things up for you, no matter what your body looks like, no matter how your practice is today. When you apply time, and you apply, you apply like an enthusiasm to be there, an enthusiasm and a joy to practice, um, these things will unlock for you. But it's really important just to notice exactly where you are in that moment and not rush that process, but allow the process. All right, come into a forward fold. This time, if you wanna step your feet onto your blocks to start, you can go ahead and give yourself that little bit of a lift. Inhale, lengthen halfway. And exhale, ground your palms. So I'm not grounding my palms right next to my toes. Instead, they're out underneath my shoulders. It get, just gives me a little more space to lean and lift. Come over to one foot, lift one of your legs, knee all the way up to the ceiling. So you'll feel that twist in your trunk. And now, as you draw your right knee towards your right shoulder, lift your left heel. So it's one motion, gaze down. Lift and connect, knee towards armpit. Hold, breathe, lock your gaze, lock your arms, press the earth away. Whenever you're ready, slowly bring the toes down. Take a moment to release. And then try it on the other leg. Step into your forward fold. This time I'm gonna be on my right foot, lift the left leg high. Knee to ceiling, bend your knee as much as you can so you're squeezing in the hamstring, squeezing in your calf. In one motion, lift your right heel and draw left knee towards the armpit. Ready, inhale, lean forwards, lift. Five breaths, press down, straighten out through your legs as much as you can. And then toes together and down to land. Come all the way down to your hips. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. Three breaths.
slowly rise up. Come down onto your back. Let your feet come as wide as the mat. Drape your knees together. One hand on the chest, one on the belly, and breathe. And reverse, walk your feet together, switch your hands, let your knees drape wide. Take a full body stretch, extend out through the legs, extend out through the arms, inhale, exhale, hug knees to chest. Roll over to your side. Gently press yourself up to a seat. Bring your hands together at your heart. If this practice was really challenging, that's amazing. That means you have something to work on. If this practice hit exactly where you are, if it unlocked something that you've been working on for a long time, Celebrate just how hard you have worked to get to this point, and then keep working, keep going. Bring your thumbs to your third eye. Let go of any, any result that you are looking for. Wipe it away and just simply honor where you are, how you feel. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste. Thank you so much for practicing with me. I will see you again in another video.